let's tell our story how we met um i was trying to remember when it was and i think please correct me if i'm wrong i think it was in the fall of 2017. that sounds about right it was yeah. about two years ago now two and something yeah, yeah, yeah. and i remember um uh, our mutual friend and colleague uh, from ILC International House, hello, Dave Cleary, mm -hmm. uh, introduced us. He uh, sent me an email saying, hey, I think um, you should meet this uh, lady. You will have a lot of things in common. So thank you very much, Dave. And uh, yeah, also Pavla, uh, we met yesterday. So uh, Thank you so much for introducing me to Ineka because uh, then we did quite a few uh, courses together and it was uh, very cool. I think uh, all of us enjoyed it. Yeah. Yeah. And I have to say you are so much further down the path of like running your own business and knowing how to run the business end of teaching. I mean, I've been teaching for 25 years, but the whole business end of it you have been such a, a gift to me. So thank you for all your help. My pleasure. I love working with, uh, with teachers and helping them with the mindset, how to do mm -hmm. it well. Yeah, and uh, mm -hmm. so balance it out for everybody. Yeah. So we met in Brno two years ago. Why did you come to Brno? Tell us the story. You came to Brno first, not Luxembourg. No, I didn't come to Brno. Well, I didn't come to Brno first, and I didn't come to Luxembourg first. I went to Prague. Oh, yeah, right. But you didn't say, we like that story in Brno, don't we, guys? Who yeah, is Brno is vast. And is from Brno. Who is from Brno? Tell us. Just tell us. Me. I'm from Brno. Tell us, please. <laughs> I know the heck is. So who else is from Brno here? Everybody's okay, shy. Tell us the story about you coming to Prague. Why would you come? That was your first time in uh, Europe two years ago, coming to Europe? No. Second time. Um, I came as a tourist when I was 18, which was a oh. long time ago. And I went to... A long time ago. A long right. time ago. And I actually did not like Italy. <laughs> Don't tell the Italians. I love Italy. You love Italy. Okay, well, I had a different experience. How do you not love Italy? I mean, come How on. How do you not love Italy? Okay, so I was 18 years old, traveling alone and adorable. So I got like all of this negative male attention. If I went now as 50 years old and less adorable, still, still adorable, but... <laughs> I still cannot believe you're 50. Oh my God. I know, I'm 50. Um, then I probably you would not have it, guys. This woman, look at her. <laughs> How do you do it? Which cream do you use? <laughs> you know, what is cream? Uh, anyway, so um, yeah, that was a that was whoa, a long time ago. I'm not telling you how many years. You can do the math. Um, <laughs> So anyway, I was in Oregon, and I had been teaching for a good number of years, mostly immigrants in the United States, English, but I did some other things too. And um, I, my son was going to university in Scotland. Right, yes. yes. Right. So he was going to go to university in Scotland, and I... Um, Hi, Alec. Is Alec watching? <laughs> no, he's not watching. Okay, maybe later. <laughs> yeah, you put it on YouTube, and I'll tell my... my he's with my sister in Washington, D.C. right now. Right, yes. So he was going to go to college in, in, in Scotland, and I was moving. I had to move. I was going through a divorce. And um, so I had to figure out something else to do with my life. My, um, and, and I always wanted to teach overseas, teach English to people overseas. That has been a long-term dream of mine. But I was tethered to my family in the United States. And now what I was... What does that mean? Oh, that's a nice expression. Tethered. 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 So think of a rope and being tied to something. So I was tied to my family and to Oregon and to my ex-husband, who was my husband at the time, and his job 
And so I could not just go where I wanted to because I was tied or tethered to Oregon. Yes. And then with my divorce, I became untethered, untied. Free as a bird. Yes. So we could, uh, I could go anywhere on the planet. And um, since my son was going to be in Europe, I just Googled best places to teach English in <laughs> Europe. <laughs> and I came up with Paris. What? Would, you, would you say you are an adventurous person? Are you adventurous? That's an interesting question because I think for most Europeans, the, the life that I have lived is very unusual and like adventurous. But for Americans, until I left the country, it was very standard. You know, the average time that Americans live in one place is five years. So I've moved about every five years all my life. <laughs> and that's just normal that's for normal. me. Yeah. Yeah. But I think for Europeans, it's like, uh uh, you left home. Like where we, ideally, where we were born. We usually, like, <clears throat> excuse me, after university, we come back home and that's where we stay. Yeah. We don't Not do that. that. But it's probably more typical than in the US from what I've seen. Some people do go home, but most people know they go off to university at age 18 or so. About half people, half of the people who graduated from high school go to university. The other half stay. They go to work. Yeah. Um, and then where you go to university, you often make ties to tie, you tether yourself to, uh -huh, <laughs> to um, your new community. So where you went to university, you often stay there. Or if you're adventurous, you will, you know, go, I want to live in New York City or I want to live in the Midwest or Texas or whatever and um, find a job there and go. And then you just, like my whole family, I have a brother in Nebraska that's in the center of the United States. I have a sister who lives in um, England and a brother who, another brother who lives half of the time in London and half in, in um, Provence, in France. Oh, wow. You know, and then I have a sister who lives in Washington, D.C., who's a diplomat. So she's lived all over the world. She, and she works with the Sudan now, which wow. is, yeah, I know, she, she, she's very important. I'm like, I'm an English teacher. And my sister is a diplomat to the Sudan. <laughs> I feel very unimportant compared to her. I bet she doesn't do Facebook Live interviews. Yeah, it's just yeah. <laughs> and, uh, but I hope she will watch this though. Hello, sister in Washington, DC. You have a beautiful story. Yeah, with, yeah it's amazing because you just recently actually found each other. Yeah, just yeah. as we were leaving for Europe. I know the story. So you want me to tell the story now? It's okay, maybe maybe later. Yeah. yeah. I would like you to tell us more about um, teaching English. All right. So when you came to Brno, this was not your first time that you taught English, but different um, environment, uh, different, dynamics, different types of people, Czech people. So I, I will definitely ask you more about that. But how was that for you, that change? Because before you were more like a tutor, uh, you were uh, teaching via Skype mainly, yeah? And now it was faced, no? Oh, okay, sorry, so. I was teaching in public schools to children. Oh, right, yeah, that too, I forgot, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I hadn't taught on Skype until I came to Europe. All right, yeah. Right, so this is new for me, the public. Actually, you're the one. I forgot. Yeah, <laughs> you're the one who me teaching on Skype. And so I have a few students on Skype, but I still teach. In you know, it feels like you're a natural. So I, I feel like you've been doing it forever. <laughs> no, 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 no. So I was a natural at teaching um, children before I became a natural at Skype. <laughs> 
Yeah, so Americans say jokes like that, and it sounds like we're bragging, but really, that's supposed to be funny. And like humor just does not translate well, so you're supposed to laugh and not think that I'm bragging about myself. Does that make sense? Yes, and you, it, all of you guys, Inika is one of the most humble people I've ever met. So <laughs> you don't have to say that. I think people can feel it. What do you say, guys? Yeah, she's not to brag, jako chlubice, jo, jako vychloubat se. She's not bragging. We have 15 people watching already. That's amazing. Hey, Yay. everybody. Hi. Where is everybody from? I want 16 people. I want more people telling us where everybody's watching from. I'm in Brno, the Czech Republic. Uh, Ineka is on the border, on the German uh, Luxembourg border. At the moment, we have uh, Carlos in Colombia, and then Katie in Slovakia, and then uh, Teresa and uh, Magda and Zdeněk here around Brno and in South Moravia. So where is everybody else from? Please tell us. I'm so excited about uh, everybody watching. <laughs> so cool. So um, please tell me more about that change. Yeah. Because there, for example, uh, Terka, I know she's a she's an English teacher. She's a young English teacher, um, very um, energetic, yeah, and uh, optimistic about teaching without course books as well. So, how did that feel? Well, moving from public schools to <laughs> to um, um, teaching adults in businesses, which I did business English, and I still do business English, among other things, um, was a huge jump. And it, it was really uh, liberating, I think, to go from teaching children who are trapped and are forced to learn what you tell them to learn <laughs> with no choice. And so you have to, like, make them want to learn it or force them to learn it, something, to teaching adults where if they don't want to learn English, they don't learn English. <laughs> yeah, so... You were saying that. That's how it goes, actually. Yeah, and I really, I you like... You go there while you sleep. You cannot put it under the pillow. Just not, no, right. you okay. have to work on it. But uh, yeah, I don't mind teaching children at all, but I really want people to actually choose to learn this. Yes. And have it be what they want. So that and was a nice change for you, actually. You said liberating. Liberating. That's a nice word. It was liberating. Osvobozuici in Czech. Can you say that? No. Osvobozuici. <laughs> okay, one more time. I lived uh, in, the, in the Czech Republic for almost two years, yeah, one and a half. One and yeah. you're so you were learning Czech a lot. I admired your dedication. <laughs> okay, I gotta just tell you, I learned Czech for a year, and I I studied every day, and I worked on it, and I got to from I was just beginning the A two level. <laughs> day two after a year of like every day and twice a week with a teacher and working so hard. A two. And then, I can't understand a word. Tvoj manžel, your husband. Uh -huh. Tvoj manžel. Hi, Dasho. Uherské hradiště, Mikovice. Hello. So nice to have you here. Máš českého manžela. You have a Czech husband. Máš českého manžela. Yeah, I should. But I teach him English. He doesn't want to teach I know. And you know, actually, it is a talent to, to teach someone. And not everybody knows how and can do it. Some people can do it naturally. Some people have to learn how to do it. And some people just, he is one of the ones that are just not so good. <laughs> And unfortunately, there are still quite a few in schools all over the world. And when I was in the US in 1995, um, there were many things that were different and I liked a lot of things, but then again, there were so many things that were similar. Uh, for example, the standardized tests that we both hate, the textbooks, um, yeah, and that just, just that approach of, 
uh, memorizing a lot of things. Yeah, that's that's bigger here in the Czech Republic, but still um, a lot of a lot of things in common um, in many places all around all around the world. How, how about Colombia, Carlos? What about Colombia and standardized tests? Is it a strong m movement there or? Not so much because here in Europe and in the US, unfortunately, I think it's similar everywhere. But ch even like China is worse, I think. So uh, hopefully, yeah. this is why I'm also doing this. Hopefully, we can inspire more and more people that it can be done um, in a more natural way, like uh, you and I are doing. Yeah. So mm -hmm. uh, let's go back to uh, your Czech environment. You. You uh, met a lot of people here in Brno, which is the second largest city in the Czech Republic. Um, and then you met people uh, through your husband who are in a smaller place, his family. Um, did you see a difference between uh, people who uh, were living in a smaller place, speaking English or no English or what's the story? What's your story? I have to say there are a lot of people in Šipuhrice did I say it right? <laughs> what did you say? Yes. Yeah. I have never met a foreigner before. I was the very first person from another country, any other country that they had ever met. And um, that was interesting and interesting for both of us, you know. And um, it was like, it was interesting when I would go out of the house to go, you know, to the grocery store or something very exciting. <laughs> it was like the talking horse had emerged. Everyone went, <laughs> to look at me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And and uh, when I would go to the like sausage counter, the Czech sausages are <laughs> yeah, totally, totally superior to anything else in the planet. And I hear Hungarian sausages are better. You hear about German sausages? No. Czech sausages are a oh, million times better. Stuff, yeah? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So I would go to the, the sausage counter and I would say, tree. <laughs> tree. Nice. Yeah, I'd have to like hold up my fingers, otherwise they'd be like, huh? Dam si tri majarski prosim. It was horrible. My German my no, in the village, uh they nobody spoke English. No, and they would all go, Wow, she speaks. <laughs> like like everybody in the store would stop and look. <laughs> Yeah. That was the first time that you experienced something like this because in the US everybody speaks English or there are places where it's only Spanish or um there are definitely places that are ethnic centers one of the schools that I worked at had a whole bunch of people from um that, that were Hmong actually um that's a, an ethnic group in Vietnam Ah, okay. Yeah, the Hmong. And so, you know, it was a big Hmong community and they had Hmong traditions and Hmong language. I don't know what they spoke. <laughs> um, adorable people. I love them. And then there, there's, you know, there's a lot of Ukrainians, there's Russians, not so many Czechs. Although I found out my stepfather's family actually came from a village north of Prague. I know. I'm like, oh, I didn't know that. So there are yeah, some. It's a melting pot in the US. Yeah. Everybody has like so many different ancestors. Yes. Yeah. And yeah. so my ancestors came from Germany mostly and some other places, but we're all just a mix of everything. Um, and so, yeah, we, 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 we have enclaves, small neighborhoods full of people who speak. A, a particular language. There's a, actually a Czech community in um, Chicago, I hear. Never been to Chicago. To be I have, <laughs> but I have one only for one day when I lived in Indiana in 1995. Oh. But I don't know about the Czech community. I know about the Moravian community in Texas. You probably oh. know that one. 
But actually, no. I know there's big German communities in Texas, but there's oh, a Moravian one too. Surely, surely, yes. Huh? Uh, you remember uh, our colleague Jared from Texas? I miss him. He's back in the U.S. now in Texas. Oh, he's back! Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah no. hey, Jared's watching. Hi, Jared. Anyways, let's go back to Brno. I want to hear more about um, English um, in Brno. What about your experience with teaching English in Brno? Uh, well, you know, people were so nice. I just, I just love Czech people. <laughs> I mean, many you poor thing. Now you don't like it there so much. Um, you know, to you here in Moravia. I know. Yeah, I know. I I really I miss the Czech Republic. One of these days, maybe I will get my buns back there because it's lovely. And my son is uni starting university in Masaryk University in Brno now. So now I have an excuse to come visit. Yay. More, more lessons with Inika here. Yay! So, um, people in Brno and their English. We want to hear it. Come on. <laughs> so, a lot of people have really good English in Brno, and a lot of people don't know any English in Brno. You got everything, right? Um, people in Brno were very happy to try to help me if I, like, uh, uh, mom. I can't remember any of my Czech, my German. I'm studying German now, so my Czech has disappeared. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, I would I'd be at the grocery store and I'd be looking for like, you know, cheese or something. And I'd, I'd find a picture of it online and I'd go up to someone and say, do you have a Czech? My, my great Czech. Mate, Czech. Mate, mate. 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 And then I'd point, right? <laughs> That's my great check, yeah. And um, if they, so sometimes they didn't know any English at all and they were happy to help me and bring me over to whatever I was looking for. Sometimes they got all excited and they brought out their English and they got to t tell me and practice. And that was like wonderful. I loved, I loved helping people learn their English. That was fine. And I loved it when they didn't speak English to me, because then I could practice my horrendous, awful check. <laughs> oh, I want to ask the people who are watching here, what would you do if you were working in a shop and Inika walked in? Would you eagerly run to her to practice your English? Or would you like back off and call a colleague? What would you do? I'm, I'm curious. What, pe what people will say. Well, I'm guessing since it's uh, people who are watching this <laughs> and I'm hoping they would eagerly run to you. Naturally. I would hope so. I would hope so. And I was thrilled when somebody did. But yeah, I had a lot of people who would, you know, all I had at Mate, I had a picture. They just had to take me over there and shape. they would like, and they go run and find somebody to help me who spoke English. And do you feel that by having to learn another language, you became a better English teacher compared oh, yeah. to before? Now I really, like, I have to do all of the things that I tell people to do. And I know how they work for myself. You know, for, for years I was telling people, you know, reading books is a great way to learn a language. And it is. It is. Um, speaking is, is better. <laughs> <laughs> I was I, I was waiting for like where you're going with this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because like, you know, I read in German all the time now. Now I don't read in And English. reading is very important. Yes, it is. It's for the more complex um, language structures, the grammar. It has different vocabulary words that are really we only write, we don't speak etc. So it's an excellent tool. And at the same time, it is passive, you know, you're just taking it in and you don't have to produce. And the producing is what shifts your language from your passive vocabulary to your active vocabulary. You have to, you have to produce it. You have to write it. You have to speak it. Otherwise, it will always just be in your passive vocabulary. Absolutely. So look what Katie says. <laughs> Yay. 
That would be fabulous. And I did. I had people come, you know, I would be like, oh, can you help me, like, print my pictures out? This was happened. I went and tried to get print my pictures out. And the person who, she just talked to me for half an hour <laughs> about, you know. And people really appreciate that they can practice their English or simply be in touch with an American. It's exciting. It's exciting. And I was thrilled to death to talk to a Czech person. <laughs> So I was happy too. I was so happy when people would come up to me just to talk. And now, what about uh, you teaching English in Germany? If you could compare, uh, not maybe from the business point of view, but from the teaching point of view. Yeah. Oh, from I actually, yeah. I have zero German students. Zero. I have one woman who lives next door to me. It just, you know, she called me up and I found out she lived next door to me when she tried to, you know, start lessons. And I'm like, I found out she's my neighbor. I'm like, excellent. This will be an easy one. <laughs> and she's not German. She's Romanian. Um, and so. No German students. Why do you think that is? I, you know, it's interesting. Um, and uh, I have Russian student, Romanian. I have a whole bunch of French students. I have French. Portuguese, but I have zero German students, zero. And I live in Germany and I have been advertising in Germany. And I'm like, and I get a Portuguese and a Russian who live in Germany. <laughs> like, okay. so once again, you are working with, well, not immigrants, expats living in Germany. Yeah, they're not like asylum seekers or anything like that. They're yeah. An immigrant is just someone who's moved to a different country to live. Yeah. I'm an immigrant. So Germans already speak a good enough English? <laughs> I wish. <laughs> no. No. Um, no. So so I have a theory. This is my theory. My theory is that Germans all have to learn English in high school and French, the ones that live in this area, because we're right next to Luxembourg and France. So they have to learn French and English. And the ones that enjoy learning languages continue learning languages in university. And then they get a job where they have to use their language and they don't take any more classes. They're like done. So those are them. And then there are people who have to take English in high school, hated it sucked, didn't like it, wasn't any good at it, whatever. And as soon as they could quit, they quit and they don't want to speak it anymore. Thank you very much. So there's those. And then there's a whole bunch of this. This is this is an attitude that's very American too. And I hate it about Americans and I don't like it about the Germans. And that is, you're in my country now. You need to speak my language. <laughs> What, you have never experienced that in the Czech Republic? No, I'm surprised. no, not once, not once. Not once. I'm so it, happy for that. Yeah. For you. I've I mean. had other negative experiences in the Czech Republic and I won't go into those, but that was, you know, no, I, I was, whenever I produced anything in Czech, people were thrilled that I could order food, that I could, ask for help, that I could, you know, say hello, goodbye, where's the bus, all of those things. They were thrilled that I could speak anything. <laughs> so why do you think that uh, people from other nationalities, maybe with different um, religious background or different skin color, are being shouted at also in the Czech Republic? Unfortunately, hopefully not as much as uh, in other places, but it, it is happening. Uh, mm -hmm. There are xenophobic people here, unfortunately. Yeah. Why not? Well, I think the reason why I was escaping all of that and other people get it is simply because I'm white and I'm American. Um, it, it blows me away that uh, with that our- breaks my heart. Yeah. Yeah. And so people who are not white and who are uh, not from different countries that are maybe have a different connotation, you know, right now, America is still like, oh, you're American. Wow. In some places, not in Germany, not in Germany. Not right. in Germany. Aha. Uh -huh. So what? 
how do you how do you feel you feel very differently um, no, definitely not as welcome, not, yeah, as not, as welcome. Huh? not as welcome no no i was very welcome in the czech republic they were thrilled to get a native english speaker we're not common there they were uh yeah they were you know tell me about movies or I, they wanted to know about my culture and my home which was great uh and it makes me very sad that other cultures are not as appreciated because you know the history and the language and the culture of, of egypt of colombia of slovakia of fill in the blank is rich and full and wonderful too and some cultures have a positive connotation and some countries and cultures have that's why i love um that's why i love connecting uh different um nationalities uh here um i i am so happy about creating this platform because i ever since i was a child i wanted to do this i was so much into this multicultural no matter where you are from what your background is we should love each other um so um i am so happy whenever we have a pub lesson for example and we have people from uh india iran romania the us scotland uh the czech republic slovakia and poland and croatia sitting all at one table and we can all understand each other because of english and that's beautiful, that is beautiful. That's and i'm so happy it's possible in this country and i hope this never changes and it only gets better i mm -hmm. really hope so i hope so too i really hope so too and that that i live in a town of 500 people it's tiny and mm -hmm. there are 48 i think nationalities <laughs> it's a little tiny town of 500 people seriously wow. so this little enclave of people is very international we have africans we have south americans central americans we have middle easterners we've got europeans asians and just like and it's it's very cool um and, and so, you, sorry go on sorry there, there there's some that are more welcome than others simply because of the name of the country they're from and that's sad ah teresa i'm so happy for the multicultural approach too yeah. i just love learning about every country on the planet not just the ones with the pretty names and the nice association and paris kind of you know yeah 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 um, anyways, let's go back to teaching English. We could talk about this forever, absolutely, but we are also here because of teaching and learning English. Um, how do you teach? So now you teach uh, some offline uh, students, but also online students. I know a few ladies here. I hope Anička is watching or will be watching. I uh, I was messaging with her today and she said hello. Mm -hmm. And also uh, Vercha, yes. Uh, so you were teaching them via Skype. Uh, but Anička also here in Brno, yeah, I remember. Uh, so uh, how about other students? You teach via Skype and offline, yeah? Yes, I teach, um, yeah, I have my own private students, both online and my neighbor and people who come to my house and I go to their house, whatever. Um, and then I work for two uh, schools that teach English as uh, in businesses. So I teach business English, I go there. And I have very different, um, well, I tailor my approach for my students. So there are some students that prefer course books, books, and I do that. Uh, there, there's my schools require me to, so I do. And then I have private students that are like, um, I want you to teach me about this subject. My my Romanian neighbor wants me to. She's going to a gymnastics conference because she teaches gymnastics. So she wants me. I know. So she wants me to teach her all about the names of the body parts and the movements that they do. And that's the perfect for you. You're a yoga teacher. We didn't yeah. mention that. We didn't yeah. mention that. Uh, this is one uh, one thing that you were doing uh, here quite a lot with my students. Yeah. 
breathing and yoga and exercising yeah so what's your thing yeah so like i don't know anything about gymnastics so i'm i'm um but definitely body and how to you know tilt your pelvis and bring your heart center up and spread your shoulders wide and so do you ever like uh because you uh also like to do this experiential uh, uh, uh take this experiential approach when teaching uh, are you maybe exercising together as you are learning or well we have to demonstrate the moves of course we do <laughs> And then over Christmas, to learn, yeah? this kinesthetic that? approach is the best way to learn because you can also do it at the same time. The body feels it, the movement, yeah. You yeah. Can hear it and it to you do it, yes. You communicate, yeah, yeah. The best. Over Christmas, I had a couple of my students teach me their favorite uh, Christmas recipe. And so we went into the kitchen and they cooked for me. <laughs> that's, best. that's my favorite lessons. Totally, totally my favorite. <laughs> I am doing Zashitkova English Tina guys, yeah, uh, experiential lessons because I love, I create the lessons that I want to be a part of as mm -hmm. well. If I'm not teaching, because I have all of you wonderful people helping uh, us here. Uh, uh, and the students mainly, um, uh, and and it's so much fun. So yeah. enjoy your life also at work, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah? I know it's not so easy, but it's mm -hmm. possible sometimes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and you also teach online, yeah, via Skype? Yeah, I sure do. And how, um, is, how is that for you as a teacher? Well, is there anybody is watching? Is anybody teaching via Skype here, whoever is watching? That would be nice to, to know. So how is it for you? I love teaching via Skype. One on one, I only do via Skype right now. That's all you do is via Skype? One on ones, one on ones. If one I do one on one, because this is my experience of the past 10 years, people focus more because they are in their own environment. We actually even have uh, the camera off most of the time. I remember telling you that, yeah. and. Um, and so you don't really like check yourself in the in the <laughs> you know like now we're like looking at you know ourselves as well not just each other and uh, and it's natural yeah but then that distracts you yeah mm -hmm. that distracts you so when you just focus on the voice of what the teacher is saying or ideally what you are saying as a student you really have to focus on how you say it even maybe 10 percent more than if we were we were in the same room i know then again there is connection there's physical touch and things like that but i've had the best results with um with uh teaching via skype even without camera yeah you know and and teaching one-on-one -on -one too when when you have like okay somebody else is talking now i can take a make mental break that that's not possible when it's one-on-one -on -one, i think my students who who you know it is more expensive and it is uh uh it just is more of a commitment to do it one-on-one -on -one. but i i also do one-on-one -on -one lessons um learning german <laughs> for me yeah. and i i did two and a half hours a day five days a week in a class learning german with like 18 other people the best experience ever. Yay, Katie. Um, and we'll hear I, more. I want you on the call. Katie, how about you jump on the call with us? Come on, I left the uh, the the link. And, and that, that is an invitation for anyone, by the way. Sorry to interrupt you. But I thought she could jump on if she wants to. She's brave enough to be on camera and share her experience as well. Katie, come on. Or Terka, if you want to come on. Or Magda, whoever is watching. Come on, you can do it. <laughs> anyway, sorry, please continue. Um, well, I did this course, this this immersion course that was two and a half hours a day, five days a week, and I maybe said one sentence every day. That was it. That was remember I our immersion course. Remember our one week, Nina you know, English week. You yeah. said I wish uh, somebody did that uh, for me in Czech. Yeah, 
because we were all like speaking all that you were teaching there. Yeah, you remember. Yeah. And yeah. you know, you know. tonight, I hope someone is watching. Yeah. Anybody who knows Inika is watching. Yeah. I know that. And if you know, when I learn a language, I just really learn what works and what's not. And when I'm sitting there doing grammar exercises all by myself with not talking to my neighbor, it's like, yes, I'm learning, but I could be learning so much better than this. So I always say this is necessary, this um, academic part, uh, but it shouldn't be the majority of what you are doing uh, for your progress. And um, yeah. Uh, you, should be you should surround yourself with the language, immerse yourself in the language as much as you can, even if it's just five minutes here and there. When you, whenever you like, I was just um, coaching a a student of mine on Friday, and we were talking about uh, driving a car, and uh, you know, like all these um, opportunities, these dead times when you can uh, surround yourself with that language. And I told her, for example, when, whenever you enter your car now, um, you cannot listen to something Czech. If you make that rule for yourself, if you're strict enough, and it's actually not that hard because you can like stick to it, yeah? Those little habits where you can stick something to an already existing routine of you, sitting in the car and driving every day okay always like stick that activity to it it works so well this way mm -hmm. right? I well i don't read in, in english anymore i only read in german yeah 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 yeah, yeah. so anyway one-on-one -on -one lessons are, are i make so much better progress yes mm -hmm. because people feel yeah like they cannot hide behind other people yeah you're always going to ask them about what they've done yeah uh, my students always have to report to me every every time we um talk uh they have to report to me how they surrounded themselves with english every every week or every other week yeah mm -hmm. whenever they had a chance and that feeling i believe of a student like oh my god what am i going to tell my teacher i didn't do anything that that pressure that adds to it and that like it's like me going to a gym and you know like if i get or uh, if i want to lose weight and i have like a trainer a personal trainer i would die like i would like not even walk in the streets if i had more uh, my, my weight was higher than the previous time. And I think this is how students feel, hopefully, as well, when they are really dedicated, when you they have to report to you all the time. They're like, I cannot say I didn't do anything, right? No, I have to, yeah. I really recommend one-on-one -on -one th to those who want to make progress fast and uh, don't need to practice a lot of interaction like the dynamics of a group and uh, maybe like self-confidence of speaking in front of other people because that's what the group is good for because you yeah. have to overcome. And you can do group lessons very well, but you, you can't have them by themselves doing grammar by themselves. And I'm just like, you know, even if you just had them talk to each other doing those grammar exercises, speak them. Ask their neighbor, is this right in English? <laughs> you know, just like you don't just I, I was blown away. German education and the education in the class I learned. I learned a lot of German. I, I in a one year I went up to a B2 level. Woo! But um, it was a lot of homework and I was I bored. I, you were not entertained much, I remember. I was very grumpy, and everyone said, "If you hate it That's so a good much, word. okay, let me type it in here. Grumpy, like, can you show with your face, like?" <laughs> I was <yeah>. not happy. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking one sentence a day—that was like literally reading the line of grammar that I had written. And I really we, hope nobody here watching is teaching or learning this way these days. It's the year 2020, people. Yeah. 
it's really not necessary to do it this way. There are so many better ways to do this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but yeah, so that was really hard for me as a teacher to sit and shut up and listen to. I really believe that uh, people in their adult, let, that's what I always say. When you're an adult, you have so many things to take care of and so many worries like nobody's having an easy life, right? So don't add to it with boring lessons and boring homework. Uh, there's, yeah, life is short. Life is short. So we should enjoy the time, uh, the process. And of course, sometimes it's hard, but what I say should, uh, the only thing that should be hard is the discipline. And I, I understand that is hard. I, it's the same for me. Yeah, that's the hard part. But everything else doesn't have to be hard. Yeah, it's the discipline that uh, that uh, doesn't doesn't or lack of discipline that doesn't uh, make you progress. You forget to practice those uh, words that you were learning last week. You don't do the, the the grammar exercise that will help you. You don't, you know, translate those sentences that will help you. I do believe there is um, time every week, like 20, 30 minutes for your language work, for your academic study of the language. But that's it. 20, 30 minutes per week. That's it. The rest of it, the language itself interaction right yes reading so you learn german by speaking to people right yeah i just went so my neighbor who i'm teaching romanian um, martina, yes this is live you are live and you can come join us hi martina <laughs> <laughs> yes we are live and i can see your comments so come join us if you like or you don't have to anyways please yes inika so making friends and, and, and having, uh, have, I just went on a walk. Now we have a, a weekly walk where we speak in German for an hour. That's a great idea. And I have a language exchange partner from Austria that I talk to half an hour once a week. And then I read in German and I still do my German grammar exercises. Hello, German grammar exercises. Wow. Look but, at you. Uh, yeah, when you, that's how I made to, I got up to B2 in one year. And that's how I got to A2 in Czech in one year. <laughs> <laughs> but you don't remember much now. I don't remember anything. It is just crazy. Because you know? it's all covered by German. I have all my Spanish is gone too. I want to hear so I want to hear your German. I would love to hear how you speak in German. Can you introduce yourself in German? Hallo. Like say something more about yourself. Ich heiße Inika Esterbrook und ich bin um, aus den Vereinigten Staaten aus der Stadt aus der Stadt Oregon und um, ich bin verheiratet, ich habe einen Sohn, um, er heißt Alec, um, er geht zur Universität in Masaryk Universität in, in Brno. <lacht> ja? Nice pronunciation. What huh? do you think, guys? What do you think of her German pronunciation? Nice <laughs> job. Okay, now we check. <laughs> <laughs> like I said, my Spanish, I could probably do some of that in Spanish, but my Czech is horrible. <laughs> okay, go, go for Spanish. Okay. Uh, me amo Inica. <laughs> Oh man, like I said, one language at a time. Me amo Inica, yo soy a profesor de anglais. <laughs> that's French, I think that's French. <laughs> okay. Love <Rob> d'anglais. <laughs> what does that mean? I don't speak German. Ich verstehe dich wenig. Ah, I understand too little. Is that what that means? Uh huh. Okay. Good job. <laughs> well, I I speak uh, Dutch. Yes, uh -huh. I speak Dutch, and I understand Dutch. So reading this um, in Dutch, it would be ik uh, ik verstaat uh, uh, 
Weinig is the same word, yes. Mm. So, so you speak Dutch? Yes, I do. Yes, that's uh, what I graduated from, actually. And my final thesis was in Dutch. Mm. Uh, but yeah, as life goes, <laughs> I am not, it's it's not really I'm not doing anything with uh, with Dutch I just visit Holland once in a while and I speak Dutch there or to some of my Dutch friends and that's it yeah you know English is the world language and Dutch is, is a small yeah universe. just like Czech yes yeah. Yeah. just like Czech yeah. so Inika one hour we've I been can't believe it. One hour, can you see one hour now it went so fast. Ah, Eva Hi, Eva. So we have another one here. We have Alice Fischer. Oh, she understood. Oh. <laughs> nice. And so you understood everything in German. What about English? Do you understand everything in English? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, that's a question for everybody. How much do you understand when Inika speaks English? Yeah, English. Tell us. And I didn't snow, slow down. This was. You did no. I didn't try even to slow you down because I I wanted this to be completely natural. Hey Eva. Okay. So what about English? How much do you understand uh, Inika's English and everybody else? Martina, Terka, if Magda's still here, Katie's, Denyek, Lily. <laughs> Lily can under. My Lily is ten. She can understand so much more English now. It's amazing. Oh, you're so good. They have they have uh, very good lessons at school now, and she really likes her teachers. And mm -hmm. sometimes I do something for uh, for girls. Now I'm doing courses for rebel girls. Those of you who don't know, I started doing courses for rebel girls, which means the beginning of puberty, eleven to thirteen, yeah, teenagers, and it's fabulous. It's fabulous. It's funny. <laughs> Giselle, you remember Giselle, she's helping out and a few other amazing teachers. So, and we have the garden, you know, and the park and um, the, they, they like the classroom. They were even cooking in my kitchen. I'll send you some photos later. I'll share them on the, on the page. Cool. So yeah, immersion for kids as well. That's where it starts. Uh, no problem. Okay, so Eva says, sure you are amazing ladies having fun tonight. Yeah, we are too. I hope you are having fun with us. Yes. Uh, Martina said, no problema. <laughs> nice. And it was fine for me. Dasha says, oh, great. Well done, Dasha. I've known Dasha for a really long time, maybe four or five years now. And she's been coming all the way from Uherske Hradiště, 100 kilometers away. For oh, lessons. That's for, like for a long she loves our courses. Hi, Dasha. I still have your plant over here. Yes, let me, let me see. Dasha's plant. Oh, I can't see. It's not on camera. Anyways, <laughs> it's somewhere over there. Um, so what about the others? How much did you understand? Tell us, tell us, tell us, whoever's watching. I see 14 people. So come on, tell us, how much did you understand Inika's English? She didn't really slow down. I didn't. <laughs> But you, I know that you can do that very well when mm -hmm. um, teaching, yes? Yeah, I have to. I have some students that are just beginners. Inika's American accent is very comprehensive. I enjoyed the time here, but I need to leave now. Take care, girl, and good night. You take care as well, Terko. Thank you for being here. Uh, thank you for commenting. That's amazing. And we will be going as well, but I wanted to... Was there something, sorry, you were saying and I interrupted? No, no, you were, no, you weren't in the middle. I was waving goodbye to Teresa. Yes, yeah, yeah, but before, no. <laughs> After one hour and it's Sunday evening and I'm getting tired, I think. Uh, maybe others are too. Uh, but my last question, which uh, is something I ask everyone, uh, is about you getting tired too. I can see that. Let's go. Yes. <laughs> what would you recommend um, others who are learning English? What well, you... we've been talking about it all the, all yeah. along. <laughs> just do... so let's summarize it. Let's okay. summarize it. All right. So you can't just 
do lessons once a week. You have to keep it in your brain, which means you have to expose yourself to the language every day. And it can just be a little bit, and it can be just passive, have the radio on to an American talk show or, or a podcast or, or film or, or music. But you have to do something every day to keep the language in your head, because if you only do it once a week, it's not going to do it. And grammar exercises will only do so much for you. You do need to do the grammar, but then you need to talk. You need to write. You need to find someone to speak to. <laughs> yes. And I would say also not be afraid. Be adventurous. You can get inspired by Ineka and her story. Uh, changing her life completely, uh, career-wise, um, everything-wise, I would say, moving to a different continent, going through the horrible visa uh, bureaucracy, um, and now living in a different country than uh, where you originally came to live, uh, <laughs> because your now Czech husband uh, is working in Germany, yeah? so you followed him. Oh, sorry, Luxembourg, Luxembourg, because you're living on the border. Yeah, Luxembourg. And um, yeah, so <laughs> I think uh, I think uh, you have lots of stories to share, mm -hmm. lots of stories to share. This was just a surface, absolute surface, I would say. Yeah, but very, very nice to talk about other languages and test your Spanish in German and Czech. I didn't get much Czech out of you, unfortunately, but... Now that Alec is coming to study here, you, you can come more often, yeah? And those of you who uh, would uh, like to uh, meet with Annika, hopefully we will be doing something maybe in the summer together. Let's see no, when no. you're here. Uh, we will hopefully see each other uh, now uh, as we arranged. <laughs> Yes, uh, and um, and let's see, let's see. Maybe you can uh, join us again uh, with uh, one of your uh, lovely lessons. I really liked your board that you were always carrying with you. Uh, <laughs> right there. Can I see it? Can I see it? I miss it. Oh, Come on, show us. This is where I write all your grammar mistakes, and I say, okay, what did you say wrong? What's wrong? <laughs> And you always carry it around. It's perfect for the summer lessons that we have in the park, yeah, or yeah. outside, or in cafes, drinking. Yeah, nice this thing is like three years old now, and it's like all scarred up and still works. Where did you buy it? Where did you buy it? In Prague. I bought it in, um, there, there was a stationery store that had, yeah, these. Mm-hmm. I, I I want I want at least one. I want at least one. I don't have this format. It's really nice. Oh no, it's really. I mean, I just stick it in my backpack. I take it to all my lessons yeah. and I write down yeah. new vocabulary and and write down their sentence structures and their mistakes. And I say, okay, what'd you do wrong? <laughs> And then, guys, if you haven't started doing this yet, you can always take a picture of the board. This is what yeah. I'm doing. This is what I'm doing, what most of the teachers that teach here always do. So you don't have to take notes. Of course, it does help when you take notes with your hand, but you can rewrite it at home. Maybe that's a really good system, like take a picture and then rewrite it in your own notebook or on mm -hmm. on uh, flashcards or pieces of paper uh, mm -hmm. with your hand. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Any more tips? Any or more tips? tips? Just, just, just stick your neck out and try yes, stick your neck out <laughs> and get out of your comfort zone and go and make some american friends and don't be embarrassed them. about your mistakes everybody makes mistakes it's how you learn and never forget your english is great already and it's good enough as it is you can always get better of course but you can 
always use body language you can make mistakes nobody really cares nobody Just cares you can communicate with people use your smile use your eyes you know and we are all human we love each other like you can just speak heart to heart okay enough about that <laughs> Inika. thank you so much <laughs> you're welcome thank you for inviting me this was really fun oh we have Petya here as well i've only managed to join this is uh one of the teachers who also did an interview here recently uh from my team Petya fekete i've only managed to join you now but i'm absolutely going to watch the whole thing later there's so much energy flowing yes Petya. well you know how it is <laughs> you know how it is here so and look at my background Petya. check this out and everyone i um i did this uh, special winter uh background for you guys so you mm -hmm. look like you're somewhere in provence <laughs> and i'm still in the czech republic you know because it's it's snowing now we finally have snow so i also had these here so let let me say goodbye with my silly uh, chain of snowflakes so <laughs> <laughs> i love these i i put them on the door and not only around christmas but it's winter so we have winter decorations <laughs> everybody needs winter with decorations yeah well i'm a decoration girl you know cozy mm. and everything <laughs> Okay. Yeah. yeah, Hige, or I don't know. How do you pronounce it? I never remember how to, it's so Hige. Hige, it's the Czech pronunciation of it. I never remember. Maybe Petya could write the pronunciation. Do you know what she's talking about? The Danish way of uh, feeling cozy and comfortable. No. And, uh, in, uh, there's a special word in uh, Dutch, uh, gezellig. They say gezellig. In, in Danish, they say hige, or I don't know how to pronounce it. Uh, and Petya one gave, uh, once gave me a book uh, for my birthday about this. So, <laughs> so cute that she's mentioning it. Hi, Petya. So, everybody, if you have any questions for us, especially for Ineka, uh, she can answer anything in the comments a bit later because we need to go to bed now yes and maybe tomorrow during the day if you have any questions please ask don't hesitate to uh check out her profile and um we'll be back with more interviews um another day maybe another Ooh. sunday yeah so you did this how was it it was all right yeah oh it was totally it was fun the, the hour went by like this it's like hour and 15 minutes almost and it's like very fast exactly all right guys so thank you for watching and we'll see you again another time ciao